Sport Touring, Sport Race, Touring ADV, Urban Scooter, Cruiser Harley, Cross, Cafe Retro and the list goes on. Within the motorsport there are quite a few different types of riding styles and the choice of helmet is huge. So how do you know which one of all helmets is right for you? In this video I am going to go over all the ins and the outs so that you can find the perfect helmet that is just right for you. Hi all, my name is Liv from Champion Helmets and welcome to our channel. To begin with, it is important to consider the purpose of which you are riding for. Do you want to use the bike for commuting? Do you like to race on track or do you like to go for longer rides? All these purposes influence to a large extent in which helmet you will need. In the next section we will list the advantages and the disadvantages of each helmet. In addition to clearly mapping out your riding goals, the stage you are in as a rider is also important. Did you just get your motorcycle license or do you already have years of riding experience? As a beginner, you really don't need to buy an extremely expensive helmet to be able to ride well on the road. It is more important to know what you really need and what is a nice extra. But more about this later. Okay. As I mentioned at the beginning, the range of helmets available is huge. To find out which helmet you should choose, it is first important to know which different types of helmet there are, for which riding style they are suitable, and what the pros and the cons of this are. We'll start with the full face helmets. A full face helmet covers the rider's entire face and generally offers the most safety. What characterizes the full face helmet is the chin bar, which provides protection for the chin and jaw during an accident. Full face helmets are equipped with a visor that protects the rider's nose and eyes. Because they cover the entire face, these helmets offer the least amount of ventilation. So you have to sacrifice a little on comfort, but on the other hand, you are the best protected during an accident. Full face helmets are generally used on circuits and by sport race riders. Jet helmets are the helmets that restrict you the least on a motorcycle, but at the same time offer you the least protection. Because there is nothing in front of your face, a lot of air gets in, which of course provides optimal ventilation, but on the other hand, the open part of your face is not protected, which makes these helmets less safe. So we can say that the advantages and the disadvantages of a jet helmet compared to a full face helmet are therefore the opposite. A jet helmet can be a helmet that covers only your skull, or a three-quarter helmet that covers everything but your face. Because jet helmets require less material than full face helmets for example, they are often cheaper. They also offer fewer features which also affect the price. Jet helmets are generally worn by Cruiser, Harley or Cafe Retro Riders. We have now arrived at the modular helmets that make the best of both worlds possible. Modular helmets, also known as flip-up helmets, are designed to provide a good balance between the protection of a full-face helmet and the convenience of a jet helmet. Modular helmets are in fact full-face helmets that allow you to ride with the chin guard open, allowing it to also function as a jet helmet. However, this is only allowed if the helmet is PJ certified. For the opening and the closing of the chin guard, more material is needed and therefore modular helmets are generally heavier than other helmets. Modular helmets are super comfortable and therefore very suitable for touring riders. Finally, we have the adventure helmets. Adventure helmets are suitable for both on and off-road riding. For riding on normal roads, the helmet actually offers the same options as a full face helmet. And for when you want to ride off-road, the helmet comes with a peak that is meant to keep out the dirt of the rider's eyes. You can easily remove the peak from the helmet yourself and attach it again. You can also wear goggles inside the helmet and these are generally the better ventilating helmets. The name says it all, but the adventure helmets are most commonly worn by and are the best suited for touring adventure riders. Nice! Now that you know what types of helmets there are, let's look at what components the helmet is made up from. First of all, you have the outside of the helmet, which we call the shell. The shell can be made of different types of materials, but I'll get to that later. The shell protects the head from hard blows and sharp objects. On the inside of the helmet, there is a shock absorbing material. This is damping material that is also called the inner shell. The inner shell of the helmet is usually made from EPS. The cushioning material does not cope well with moisture, so make sure you always store your helmet where it is dry and do not put wet stuff in it like your gloves. You also have in-mold made helmets. In these helmets, the cushioning material is injected into the outer shell, which makes for a strong and lighter shell. But usually there is an inner and an outer shell. Each helmet has an inner lining and in mainly helmets, it is removable, washable and antibacterial. In addition, the helmets also have a chin strap. 
This can be quick release, a double D closure or a ratchet closure. Another important part is the visor. This part protects you from dirt and insects on the road. You can often get these in a variety of colors to accentuate your helmet and to help to protect you from the sun. Touring helmets in particular also have an integrated sun visor which serves as a protection from the sun like sunglasses. Finally, helmets come with various vents and ventilation outlets. I'll go into detail more on that later. Okay, now that you know what types of helmets there are and how they are put together, a logical next question is, how do I know which helmet is actually good? To find out if a helmet is good or not, you have to look at the component's material, weight, the visor, noise isolation, ventilation, comfort, the features, and the price quality. In this part of the video, I will go into what you should look for in each component. We'll start with the material. You can divide the material part into two different categories. The first thing you look at is what material the outer shell is made of. Let's start with the cheapest material a helmet can be made of, which is polycarbonate. By cheap, everything is really set as well. Helmets made from polycarbonate are generally the heavier helmets as more material is needed to provide the same strength as the more expensive materials. This makes these helmets heavier. In addition, polycarbonate has the least durability and is prone to discoloration. The next material is fiberglass. Fiberglass is better than polycarbonate and that's because it offers both strength and light weight. However, it is more expensive. Finally, we have carbon, Kevlar and Aramid. These materials are the best materials a helmet can be made of. This is because they do not require much material, which make most helmets extremely light. In addition, helmets made of this material have a lifespan of about 10 years, which is longer than polycarbonate or fiberglass. These advantages are reflected in the price. Carbon fiber helmets are usually more expensive. The second thing to look for when choosing the material is the number of shell sizes the helmet is available in. When it comes to helmets, we all know that there are different sizes. You have everything from XS to XXL and more. But the outer shell size doesn't always change with the helmet size. Producing multiple shell sizes increases the cost of production, assembly, and in the process requires more materials. So, a cheap helmet will usually come in two shell sizes where three shell sizes is good. Four or more outer shell sizes is excellent and one is weak. It is always best to get the smallest shell size for your comfort and the more shell sizes a helmet has, the more likely it is to fit you perfectly. Next, you look at the weight. Maybe you could already make the link, but what a helmet is made of has a big impact on the weight. This part is important, but quite simple. A helmet should be as light as possible. This gives a nice riding experience and it prevents fatigue in the neck. Next, you need to pay attention to the visor. A good visor will be optically correct and it will be anti-scratch and anti-fog. A low quality visor will not have this. A very low quality visor can cause your vision to be distorted itself. A tip is to look for helmets that are pin look prepared and even better if the pin look lens comes standard in the box, because this is a sign of a quality and a service that you do not get with inferior helmets. A pin look lens ensures that your visor does not fog up and that provides a great riding comfort and safety on the road. Then there are helmets that come with an integrated sun visor. You'll find a sun visor usually on touring helmets or sport touring helmets, which you'll need usually if you are going on longer trips. That's because if you ride without a sun visor, then the low hanging sun can be very annoying. Something that really makes a difference between a budget helmet and a premium helmet is the visor mechanism. If your visor feels weak or loose, you probably have a poor quality mechanism and this can affect your safety. Helmets that feature a good visor mechanism have a tight seal between the visor and shell. This keeps you dry and comfortable and it prevents you from being dulled by wind noise on the road. These systems are usually more sophisticated and therefore have a higher production cost. A good seal on your visor is very important. The noise isolation of a helmet is also an important factor in your choice of a helmet. Noise plays a big role in riding in comfort. A quiet helmet gives a nice riding experience and it makes you more concentrated on the road. There is often a big difference in this area between the cheaper and the more expensive helmets. Especially if you are on the road for several of hours in a row, it is necessary that your helmet is well sealed from the outside world. We test all helmets we sell for noise so that you exactly know what you are buying. Ventilation is another important factor in what makes a helmet a good helmet. Especially with full face helmets and modular helmets, you want them to have top ventilation. These helmets normally have vents on the chin, on the forehead and also vents on the back of the helmet to let warm air out. When you go to buy a helmet, it is advisable that you remove the inner liner so that you can see the EPS holes in the shell of the helmet, as these are the actual vents in the helmet. 
In doing so, you can also check the channels in the EPS that allows air to circulate. The fewer the channels and the shallower they are, the less air circulation you can expect. Comfort depends on the fit and is also quite a subjective part. What one person finds comfortable, the other finds absolutely nothing. The best way to find out to put a helmet on and to keep it on for a few minutes to see how comfortable it is. When we talk about features or options, we are talking about the extra things that a helmet is equipped with. You can think about whether the helmet has been wind tunnel tested, how many certifications the helmet has, whether it is prepared for a communication system or a drinking system, the closure of the helmet and whether it has a quick release. Wind tunnel testing and certifications make a helmet more expensive. Many tracks require a FIM certification, which again, you often find on the more expensive helmets. If you often ride in a group, then it is also useful to take into account the preparation for a communication system in your search for a good helmet. Finally, the price quality ratio is also an important factor. Despite the fact that helmets perform well, the price is an important factor in their overall score because if two helmets perform the same, but one of them has a lower price, then the other one scores relatively better. Okay, now that you know exactly how to find out which helmet suits you best, you also need to know what size of helmet you have. You can buy the best of the best, but if you do it in the wrong size, you will still not be able to reap the benefits. Before you start looking at the right helmet size, it is important to know that the shape of our head is unique. Depending on the shape of our head, we can find an even better fit. With some brands, head shapes are classified by round, round oval and oval. The vast majority of brands are round oval. It may be that despite measuring, a helmet still does not fit quite right. Then this may be due to the fit. Some brands are also known for their slightly different fit. In the picture, you can see an overview of the different fits to get a better idea. Helmet sizes are measured in centimeters, so the first thing we need to do is measure our head. To do this, take a tape measure and measure the circumference of your head. If you don't have one, you can use a cord and then measure the cord. You measure from the point with the largest circumference, which is about 2 inches above the eyebrows to the back of the head. We'll do this as horizontally as possible. Once you have done this, you can consult the size chart on our website. If your measurement is between two sizes, it is useful to choose the smallest size. This is because the helmet should not be too loose when you put it on. Even if it's a bit tight in the beginning, the lining will shrink over time. Note that a size M from one manufacturer can easily be a size L from another. Okay, once we have our helmet size, there are a few guidelines to follow to make sure it is indeed the right one. First, if you can easily move your head back and forth in the helmet, that helmet is in fact too big. It is not practical to use a helmet that is too big because it does not protect you properly and it can cause problems when riding at a high speed. For example, think of vision loss or even too much noise. Second, to check for a good fit, you should be able to place your little finger between your forehead and the helmet. If you can just get your little finger in between without it being too loose or too tight, then the fit is correct. Also, you should not feel a pressure point on the head from the hard outer shell and it should not be too tight that you get dizzy or it causes a headache. Keep in mind that the helmet does not have much padding at the forehead, so this will not vary much in the future. Around the cheeks, it may also feel too tight, but you can just ignore this. The lining at the cheeks will mold to your face as you will use the helmet. Okay. Now that you know everything there is to know, you might not be able to figure it out completely. That is why we have put all the information from this video into a comprehensive blog at championhelmets.com where we discuss the most common problems and a link to the page is provided at the bottom of this video. If you still have questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay. This brings us to the end of this video. You know now more about motorcycle helmets than most riders, so congratulations. If you have any questions about this video, don't hesitate to ask. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with all of our reviews, road tests and guides. My name is Liv from Champion Helmets. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.